Hey there! Welcome to Sneaking in the Green Room. I'm your host, Andrew Kushner, and each week I get to sit down with some of Portland's funniest comedians. Let's be honest, these are some of the country's funniest comedians. And today, I got a special guest. It's me. Oh, it is you. <laughs> We've got Joanne Schenderly. She wow. is blowing up all over the city. She is an amazing host of a great open mic and a showcase called Control Yourself. Thank you. That's yes. Alberta Street Pub. Mm hmm. Sundays at um, 9. Amazing show, amazing mic. Um, yeah, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. It's so green in here. The honor's all mine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, we've got some new art today. This is brand new just for you. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's vibrant. See? Exactly. You knew what I liked. Dots. Yeah. Oh, Very I touch abstract. It. No, you're fine. I don't know. Maybe they painted it earlier. Metallic. I do like gold. I'm attracted to gold, really easily. I love shiny things, too. Yeah. It takes my attention away. Calms yeah. me. See, it calms you. makes me hyper. Definitely. I'm in there. Well, first and foremost, again, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come here and chat with me. Um, let's find out about you. Yeah. Where were you from? Where were you born? I was born in Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Um, yeah. Cheese Town. Cheese? Cheese State. Cheese State. And I... Uh, yeah, cheese and I was gonna say biscuits, but we're not a biscuit state. It's Green Bay Packers. It's venison. Yeah. Ooh, venison. Yeah, I was just talking. I was just on a podcast about food, and I was talking about um, venison and how, you know, how most. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California. Southern California. Angeles. Okay, so you know how you guys get like a spring break. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, we don't really get a spring break. We get a week off around Thanksgiving for deer hunting season. And I thought everybody knew that, so and what, apparently not. Is a deer, right? Yes. And yes now, is it a deer. male deer or is it a female? I think it's just a deer. I think it's just whatever. It's just a cool a deer. deer. It, so, yeah. so you, you the want venison a deer meat. Jerky, yeah. Say, yes, sure. I could be. I, I'm not. I'm not an expert in venison, but it tastes great. It but you know, like at kid lunch at lunchrooms, kids would like. It was like a hot commodity. They're like, oh my god, you have venison. And everyone would want to eat it. Interesting, like fur pelts and... <laughs> yeah, Davy Crockett. Was, what did I get? Uh, Lunchables were really the... Oh, Lunchables were great. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 the pizza you ones. for anything with those. So good. So Wisconsin, yeah. um, did, Green Bay, what area? This is the toughest question. I never know how to answer. I'm 29 years old. I have no idea how to answer this question because I don't feel like I have a home in Wisconsin. Like one, I claim the entire state. I moved... Um, nine times wow. between no seven times between first and eighth grade or baby in eighth grade it doesn't it, i can't even count anymore i don't Man, even know that's that's a yeah. huge i went to two different i went, change nine times eight times yeah yeah so i was the new kid pretty much every year of my life i uh, which plays into my neuroses no i don't know well that probably helped you with your comedy and being funny i mean were you a funny kid and yeah, I was. I thought so. Um, who knows? I was an I was an active kid. I was into plays and to acting at a yeah, at a very young age. Um, so that was something I always knew I wanted to do. So I was never really concerned with like social statuses or interactions. You know, I kind of have. I was the girl that was friends with like every different friend group because gotcha. I knew I was only going to be there for a year or two and then moving on. So I was just like. My mom always taught me to like fend for yourself, you know. See, and I was more on the lines of um, I would come to town and make enemies real quick. Really? I moved about four or five did times. you wear Jinko jeans? Were you that no, kid? No, I didn't oh, wear Jinkos, okay. but I did wear some bad, baggy jeans. Sure. And um, yeah, again, I I got a phone going off here, so That's fine. yeah, this is. Did you say is it the tax collector? That's no, what tells me. No, <laughs> it's totally bill collectors or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. But no, I used to move to town and see, I have a Judas face. So people just naturally don't like me. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just this weird, people don't I've never why. heard that term before, by the way. You know, I've made it up. It's completely <laughs> my own term. And it's surprisingly, I've, I've found it really is true. I mean, there's people who just don't like the sight of me. That's and crazy. Someone actually came up to me and told me, you have a Judas face. Huh. So I looked up Judas, looked him up. He looks like me. The Bible guy. Right? The Bible guy who sold out Jesus. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know how that Sell out. emailed right there. <laughs> That's okay. But it, for some reason, every conversation I have reverts to the Bible, and I've never read it. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> you know, I've, I've read it 
not the whole Bible, but I picked it up and looked through it. Sure, great I've thumbed stories. through it. Great, great, great stories. Great stories. Um, but yeah, um, I would not make friends well. And huh. I used to think it was my less than desirable personality. No, it turns out Judas face. That's funny. Yeah. I always got told that I look like somebody, still to this day, like I'll get mistaken for people all of the time. They'll be like, oh, Rachel, did, oh, I'm sorry. Like, people have walked up to me, like, tapped me on the shoulder, and I'll turn around and be like, oh, you're not who I thought you were. Like, oh, you've got one of those I just have a normal face. Of, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just like, just very norm core. You know, you, you've probably got a lot of good genetics out there, so. My parents are very pretty. There you go. <laughs> well, man, so I guess we were talking about you growing up, because this is not about me, this is about you. Oh, I am the dialogue. rookie trying to get into the mind of the actual comedian. Oh, God. Um, so you said you were funny, you moved around a lot. I thought it was funny. I, am, I, um, Saturday Night Live was my favorite thing okay. growing up. Carol Burnett, I would, Carol Burnett, even as a, uh, how old, kindergarten, I went to the afternoon kindergarten. So every day it was, my mom was like, you were notorious about this. Like you would, this was your routine. I'd wake up and I had sit on my, my had a director's chair, like a mini baby director's chair with my name on it, like wow. with Joanne on it. So I don't know that it was influenced, but so it's quite sit, a princess. Yes. I would sit in that chair and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a glass of milk and watch Sesame Street and Carol Burnett. And then it was time to go to kindergarten every that, day. That sounds, I, I definitely remember Carol Burnett yeah. and Sesame Street and Electric Company. I don't know if you Yeah, were, yes. Yeah, you were definitely an 80s kid, early totally. 80s, mid 80s. Mid 80s, 86. Yeah, Reading Rainbow. Yeah, Reading Rainbow was great. What was the Cosby show? Remember he had some weird pen? Never mind. Oh, see, no, see, what would... I, I couldn't get into the ghostwriter era. It, there was another show. Anyway, disregard that. I do remember, uh, do you remember the counting ones were always my favorite. My mom said that as a kid, I learned how to count in Spanish to 10 before I learned how to count in English to 10 because I was watching so much in Sesame Wisconsin, Street. That's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing I know. Man. <laughs> like, on Sesame Street, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 10, 10, 11, 12. 12. It's probably in the marbles. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh, man, I'm going to go home and look Creative that Creative genius. Oh, yeah, man. it was Those great. were the days. There was four channels, and you'd get lucky to have one that had a cartoon on it. Oh, yeah, we never had cable. Yeah. Yeah, so I would do that, and then and then as going into middle school, Saturday Night Live was a big thing. I loved the Spartan Spirit cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. And all the stuff. Mary Catherine Gallagher. Like, all of the greats that, like, oh, was timeless. Lady. Church lady. Oh. I mean, like, I mean, there's something to say about the Will Ferrell, Sherry O'Terry era, Sh Molly Shannon of that Saturday Night Live. It was. It really was. It was never created again. Um, and people could say, people, uh, I don't even think, I, I want to know, I want to meet the people who argue that those characters are less important than the previous one. You know what I mean? Because it's like, no. I, I have trouble. See, I, I'm very biased. Just really? Because after, you know, Will Ferrell left, I mm -hmm. think the show completely changed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It hasn't grabbed my attention. It kind of, I think Mad TV. Oh, was so like, say, oh totally. I love Mad TV. Loved Mad TV. And yeah. then towards the end, they both kind of, I don't know if they ran out of ideas or just got lazy, but. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But, but there was, it was a beautiful moment that, you know, a couple years run of, of those Every characters. Every was gold. Every yeah. single from start to finish. Show Here's something oh, about uh, newbies. It is it is unprofessional to say skit. It's sketch. Ooh, see? Put I'm that in your little there bag pocket. There we go, yes. Yeah. I apologize. Sketch, <laughs> not skit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, we're learning but, things. But, oh, no, we are totally learning. <laughs> That's part of the show. I, I learned, learned the hard to way. Do. Oh, I have too. <laughs> I definitely learned the hard way. And so, funny kid, moved around a lot. How, high school, how'd that go? Uh, thankfully, I had all four years of high school. Both of my sisters did not. They moved twice during their uh, stretch of high school. But I had all four kids. I was really into show choir. Have you ever heard of show choir? I have not heard of oh show choir. Oh, my God. I was so into show choir. It is um, It's very popular in the Midwest. It's I'm 70 kids maybe like 80 like 40 40 dudes 40 chicks and it's it's singing and dancing um it's all in unison it's a very strict um there's there's people's jobs that are choreographers that get paid thousands of dollars to teach high schoolers how is to dance this. Rock? 
No, 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 no. No, we would do. We had Beyonce songs my last year. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's. It's very fun. nerdy, but it was the best. Um, I can't sing, so I, I never sang, but I would lip sync all the time. But I would always get awarded for having the best, um, like animated facial. So like whenever there was like, uh, like character awards yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, I was so yeah, yeah yeah. I I nailed it, and all my all my colleagues were mad because they're like, you're not even singing, you're not even doing half the work. Because the the hard part is singing and dancing and getting a point, and I would just. I, I want I, I I being in a lip sync battle is on my bucket list because I would fucking murder. Oh man, I used to watch. Uh, was it putting on the Ritz or putting on the hits? There was a lip sync show. See, I don't I'm know. Dating myself that sounds again. great. Back though. in the eighties, it was <laughs> an amazing show. Yeah, look at putting on the Ritz or putting on the hits. I don't know. Putting on the hits was a host. Okay. I I, could, I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> totally I can't make sentences anymore. And so, when did you find out that you kind of, I mean, you said you were an actress, you know, at a young age, but in high school, did you get, like, a bug to, to write ever? When did you start writing? Yeah, I would, um, I am, in eighth grade was my first, like, I emceed our talent show, like, our middle school talent show, but I also wrote, um, I think, like, a four-minute sketch for it. It was, like, a dating sketch. Uh, it was, like, a like a singled out like a dating thing you know like a dude and then three suitors yeah. or whatever um and I my friends and I wrote it and it was a hit and then it was I wish I had the recording of it I should ask my middle school to call yeah. but so that was the first time that I was like this is amazing and fun and then I would always try to do it so I was senior class president so I was kind of in charge of the pep assemblies anyways oh, so I was writing little mini sketches all the time without really even knowing what I was doing, you know. So but you like, were so. the student body president. Do you <laughs> yeah. remember like what your motto was? My slogan was? Your slogan? I think it was just like, Joanne will probably, I went to a small school, so they're probably like, she'll get it done, whatever. Uh, we all know with over like a 120 IQ. Like, yeah, no, well, joke, no, no. <laughs> there was, I mean, there was, it was a big debate. I remember senior year, my friend Evan Peterson ran against me and I was like, oh fuck, I might lose. <laughs> I was nervous. Oh, man. <laughs> sounds fun. I never got to but he was a anything. radical. He was too. He was too Bernie. He couldn't. He couldn't. Oh, I was more Hillary. Man. He was kind of <laughs> gotcha. You were. Just yeah. Saying. He wanted. He wanted like outside campus lunches, and I was like, "That's never gonna happen." So I'm not gonna waste my political stance on that. Anyways. Well, I mean, it, it kind of tells me where where you were at, and you know, high school. So you have a love for doing sketches. Sure. You you had already felt. I don't like to call it the heroin, but there's like this drug of when you get a laugh or when you feel like oh, it was just positive reinforcement. Yeah, it was just you know even when like from a young age, I just wanted to be an actress because I couldn't make a decision of what you know like when you're in elementary school or middle school and you have to write reports and like what do you want to be when you grow up and oh, take yeah. this test and you know figure it out. I could never decide and I realized that if I was an actress I could play all of those different roles so I didn't have to make a decision. Man, see I just wanted to get rich. <laughs> that was... So I had a friend who was he was in the movie Hook. He actually played oh, yeah? the reflection of Robin Williams when he looks in the water. Oh really? Yeah that's my good friend I that's awesome. <laughs> and so I always had this want to be an actor and I actually got um, my big hook up in the eighties um, late eighties, I was auditioning for Roseanne, the TV show, yeah. the youngest son. Really? And I made it to the final audition. This is a horrible story. I want to hear it. I faked an injury at school because I was so nervous that I wouldn't get the part, and I didn't want to read in front of these people. I was so scared that I faked an injury. So you didn't go to the last audition. I didn't go to the last audition. Do you kick yourself for it? No, because he didn't really. Nothing happened in his career. That that part was awful. He was just. Oh. And so. No, I, I do kick myself. I'm <laughs> lying. That would have been. He was in an episode of Seinfeld. The kid was. Oh, People fun. Don't remember yeah. That. And so, yeah. I kid that. actors would be weird. I'm happy I was never a kid actor. That was like, you know, when you're a kid, you don't understand fame and that kind of thing. So it's something that you always want, but you don't really know what the responsibilities are with that, you know. And I, I, you know, I was always kind of like, Mom, let's go on auditions and stuff, and. But we didn't. We lived in Wisconsin. There was really nothing to audition for. <laughs> yeah, I had tons of auditions, and nothing ever panned out. I, I'm not good at auditions. Shows. Neither am I. And anyway, that was my 
claim to fame was faking injury to get screwed out of to get oh, boy. <laughs> I shouldn't even self deprecating. <laughs> um, but yeah, let, let's get into you, you finally, you know, you're you're in Wisconsin. When did you get an idea like I, I think I need to leave here for was it for work reasons? Oh, what, when did you decide? To well, I went to college in Minneapolis, and I lived there for like a total of seven years. So after college as well, um, and then what school? University of Minnesota. Nice. Go Goves. Yeah, I spent some time eating prairie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The oh, prayers. Yeah. Oh God, the prairies. That's where they had the Minnesota Vikings training camp. Yeah. Who cares? And so you went to Minnesota, Golden Gophers. Go Gophers. I went to Minnesota. Um, I I actually went to theater school my first year um, in Wisconsin, and they only allowed five freshmen in, and I had class with the same four people. And so I was like, okay, cool, my trajectory path is great. And then I got really bored with having the same four people around, so I was like, I got to dip out of here. Um, so then I went to Minnesota, but then I kind of like, didn't do acting anymore so it's like oh I, I should follow my I should follow the economy advice and get a real degree you know so I did that nailed it um, but then I was about to be 25 I was 24 and I was just feeling stuck and I was like you know you got one life to live what am I gonna do here in Minneapolis I was sitting around you doing random projects I already got my degree. I started a sewing company called Totes and Goats, totesandgoats.com. It was doing well for itself. Um, I was getting paid a lot to sew random things together. I once, uh, Golden Plump Chicken hired me to, to sew beanie baby chickens onto hats wow. for a lot of money. It was great. Um, so I was doing all these other That's things. <laughs> it was hard work. It sounds like it. <laughs> Hand, hand, hand sewn, oh mind you. And I didn't know. I was like, do they lay down this way? I ended up having them sit on top because it was either easier to do that. So it, like it was they hard. Had to be really expensive. It was hard. They were big. They were like this big. Oh, man. Anyways. <laughs> and so when did you? So yeah. I was um, hosting art shows in Minneapolis for this company based out of LA, and they uh, they were these local art shows that happen across the country. And um, the owner and I hit it off, and she offered me a job directing art shows in Portland and Seattle. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity, um, even though it's kind of a scam, uh, because I knew I wanted to live somewhere else before I was 30. I was like, you know, I'm no dummy. It takes years to get acclimated with a new city, blah, blah, blah. So um, I chose Portland over Seattle. I could have lived in Seattle, but I chose Portland because it was cheaper rent at the time. Oh, yeah. At um, the time. Was... To uh, 2011, 2012, 2012. I came here on New Year's Eve, so I always get confused as to what year I was celebrating. But I, like, drove cross country. Um, and then when I was here, I was like, you know... I want to be a writer, and if you want to be a writer, you have to put your money where your mouth is. There's a trifecta. So I was looking at all of the people that I really admired that were nailing it in all of you know, in all different realms. Um, so I was looking at your Amy Polars and your Tina Fey's, because what's a girl to do when you don't know that? You know what I mean? Like these amazing f figureheads. Um, and also, I was just completely unaware of everything underneath, you know. And I wanted to get to know what was happening on the ground level, you know. Um, so I did some online research. Uh, found stand-up comedy um, and found um, I got some favorite you know like JC Coley I found like she's in LA she was a YouTube thing that came out Brooke Van Poplin was actually the first YouTube uh, video that I saw it was a set of hers from Caroline's and I was just like I can do this I like fell in love with her died laughing um, and I was like sweet I can relate to this um, so I started improv because I wanted to keep my mind sharp I uh, started staying up because you had to put your money where your mouth is and then in hopes to eventually complete the trifecta of being a sketch writer. Well, you're doing it. Hopefully. Well, I mean, looking at... I got the third trifecta, though. I got that third all prong. All these shows I've seen recently, I keep seeing your name popping up on them. Well, so I appreciate you're, you're doing it. something right. I think you've definitely For the got time. the, the rumblings. <laughs> you've got the juice. I told Adam pa Posse that he's got the juice right now. I feel like... Oh, he's got the juice. Yeah, I feel like you have the juice. I might. I mean, I'm full of juice. <laughs> but, uh, no, a buddy of mine saw you at, uh, I think, Barbara Holmes' show sure. the other night. Yeah. Um, and he said you were amazing. 
Oh, he we'll tell him thank loud. you. Yeah, his name's Justin. He's, he's a new up-and-coming comic. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's, he's a good kid. Um, so, yeah, open mics. When did that start for you? Yeah, so I lived in Portland for about a year before doing any sort of comedy stuff. Um, and I was just work from home, you know, the, the work that, the job that I have is really demanding, so didn't get out much to explore the city, um, but I did, I was like, you gotta do this, and so I went online and researched um, Portland comedy and open mics, and a couple of them popped up, but I knew I could only go on a Monday, so it was the boiler room, open mic. Great open mic. Right. Just running yeah, it was amazing. Um, I'm so happy that that was my first one. It's funny because on the website, it makes it look like it's almost a theater. Like, oh, I, yeah. it does not say it's a bar, or right. I didn't comprehend that it was a bar. Um, so I was like, oh, sweet. I just thought it was like a mini black box theater because the pictures are black and white and there's like lights behind it, you know. And I was like, "Sweet, I can do this because I'm used to the I'm used to the stage." So that wasn't bothering. I was not used to just standing in the corner of a bar and talking to yeah. people in in broad daylight. So, um, but it was fun. It went well. It went okay. I brought a few people. Um, they, I had rehearsed these jokes. I was so excited to say them. Um, got a little. I got a little too racy up top. And by that, I mean probably racist. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. It didn't, well, because I was like, okay, cool, how do I... I did the, the age-old mistake of being a new comic and and making fun of the city that you're in, right? So here I'm standing in front of all my now peers um, and being like, oh, I moved here from Minneapolis. And I said something, I'm like, like any common adult, I, I did the research, I went on Wikipedia and saw the difference between Minneapolis and Portland, and I was like... You know, the biggest alarming difference was that Minneapolis is 44% African-American culture. And I was like, Portland? 0.8. I'm like, y'all a bunch of white kids up in here. Oh, yeah. Silence, though. Because who am I, you know, like, and that goes into, I'm a blonde white girl walking into a bar telling all the other white people that they're white. And, you know yeah, what I mean? I've, I've done it before where I try and be the voice, you know, to, to set the white people straight. And it's just like middle-aged guy, you know. Yeah. He's had it all his whole life and is trying to, you know, well, that's, write the, the social shit. Yeah. yeah. See, I thought that we would join in, in a giggle at how obvious that fact was. But yeah. in reality, I was being like, don't tell us these things. Yeah, no, I had a you know? great joke I thought was great. And it was, um, hockey is coming to Portland. They're saying NHL is coming here. And I'm like, that's fitting for the whitest city in America. Yeah. <laughs> Go over well. People love hockey here, and do they though? I, I don't know. I love the hockey. Portland Winter Hawks, or I don't. Did they? I didn't know they had a team. Yeah, they've oh. won like a ton of championships. Anyway, oh, crazy! It's, Good for them. It's totally not uh, Minnesota North Stars. I know you're from Wisconsin, so I don't know Wisconsin. No. Were you a North Stars? Are you talking about? Well, we have Minnesota the Wild. The Wild. No, I'm, I'm old. So <laughs> way before the Wild, it's there like, was homeboy. But it was the Dallas South. Disregard, I'm getting into sports. Texas has a hockey team. Oh, man. Well, okay. Well, we're, we're getting deep into this. We're already at like 24 minutes. Oh, oh sorry. So, no, hey, it's, it's all good. So let's let's discuss what I wanted to kind of start this show for. Yeah. Is for the young comedian to kind of look into the mind of a pro and kind of give a little tip to the young comedian on what you would or would not do. I mean, we don't want a rule book. You've got to learn the hard way. You've got to tell jokes and find out how to be funny, but let's focus on the women of Portland. Sure. Um, it's a tough time right now. There's very few women to men when I go out to open mics. I don't know if it's because of the atmosphere, too many men. Um, how did you put up with them? I mean, were there... there? You know, um, I want, <laughs> because I do run a showcase, which and there is an open mic that follows to it, and I have noticed that there is a lot of, uh, there is, there's not that much female representation at the mics um, and I know that people are saying that it's because they're like oh well, yours is really late on a Sunday but when I first started I was hitting it hard I went to I mean granted I was bartending so I didn't have a demanding nine to five job so that always plays a factor um, but yeah when I went to I would feel guilty if I didn't go to mics so I I hit it I hit it hard and now and now I still feel guilty that I don't go off but like my projects have changed um, but at the time, when you're like eager and hungry, you go for it. Yeah. 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that you you said something that was uh, it's sad, but at the same time, like just because there's all this quote unquote lack of representation of females, I would rather book a quality comic for being funny than book a comic for being a female. You know what I, I mean? Agree, I agree. So, so at the same juncture, it's kind of like who wants it hard enough, no matter what your genitalia is. <laughs> now, looking at the landscape out there, I mean, you've got Amy Miller, Brie Pruitt, just some of the funniest female comedians in the country, and I mean, you're part of that, and it just, it, you can feel it, it doesn't matter how many women, because they're bubbling up to the surface, they're mm-hmm. they're making it happen, so, yeah. no, I, I completely hear you, I think it's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing time to be a comedian in Portland, and man or woman. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I honestly just think it's who, who wants it, who wants to go for it. Because I've seen a lot of funny, funny ladies that they'll do it, and then they're like, you know what? It's this. I want to focus on something else, and that's okay. You know, no, for a guy true. too, that's okay. Well, we're at the end of this, man. It went by so fast. I know. This I'm sorry. Hour. I feel like I no, just went off about right myself, no, which I, I did. I want to get. To the crowd to understand or find out where where is you where can they find you man I just stumbled over my words to find that out <laughs> where can they find you uh, social media where ah uh, yeah you can website? follow me on I do have a website joannshinderly.com s c h i n d e r l e it's a mouthful also on Twitter Joanne Elizabeth uh, without the e but if you just I'm the only Joanne Shinderly there is, so if anyone wants to find me on the internet, you can. And you can go out and see her at Control Yourself. Yep, at Sundays Alberta at Street 9, Pub. Alberta Street Pub. Joanne, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're amazing. Keep on rocking it, and I'll be out at your shows. And yes. At your mics and bombing, doing what I need to do. No, dude, it's better. working. Exactly. It's working. It's not bombing. Well, folks, thank you again for tuning in. This has been another great episode of Sneaking in the Green Room. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.